Okay, here we have the very first screen, um, screen one of 14 in the first camera menu. Uh, as I shoot uh, JPEG, I'm gonna leave it on JPEG, but I'm gonna change this to extra fine. Um, I'm gonna leave this on 42 megapixel. It's interesting to note, you can either shoot 18 megapixel files or even 11 megapixel files if you want to, but generally 42 is great. Aspect ratio, I'm gonna leave alone. Uh, on, I always change this to Adobe RGB because it's a lot, a wider color space. And because I'm a JPEG shooter, don't freak out. I know most of you shoot raw. I don't, um, it, it just gives me more color gamut. Drive mode, uh, if you got it, use it. So I'm going to go to continuous high. Even if I'm shooting portraits, I'm going to want to have it on continuous high. This is that kind of new feature that's in the uh, a7R2 that gives you uh, the, the pixel shift. So it's like anything on a tripod where nothing is moving. You can get these incredibly cool images, but it's gonna be all but worthless for a sports photographer. So I'm gonna leave that off, but it's really cool. Okay, I don't care about AFS. I do care about AFC and balanced works great. Wide area is always a good place to start. Um, focus settings. The, uh, the out of the box setting is off a little bit. Let's see if we can. This is the vertical horizontal thing where it'll, um, if you move the, um, using the joystick, if you move the autofocus area into a certain part of the viewfinder, when you go into the vertical format, It'll switch it. This is something that's shared by the A9. AF Illuminator, you always turn off because you can't use it in sports. Even high school um, state regulations now require that you turn this feature off. And the NCAA for basketball, it's a big no-no. I'm going to go AF with shutter off because no self-respecting sports photographer uses the shutter release to autofocus with. It's always back button. Okay. Keep going here. This all looks good. Phase detect, yep. Um, auto ISO, you're always gonna wanna turn that off. I believe the native uh, ISO of this camera is 160. Um, let's see here, I'm not sure about that, but I'm fairly certain. And let's see here, we're gonna keep going. Yeah, that's good. That doesn't matter, I don't really use much there. Auto white balance is good for most situations. Uh, I want to point out that the um, in the picture profile, if you go to the very uh, the number seven, that's your S log, and notice that there is an eight, a nine, and a ten. And I've not exactly um, explored these yet, but it's kind of cool because anytime you see that right hand button. It means that there's something to the left. So whenever you do this, you can you can set your blacks, you can set your gamma, your knee. These are all like high-end video settings. So this is S log three, S log two, and these are the um, the new settings that I have not explored yet. And at some point, I will do a video on those. But I'm for right now, I'm going to leave it alone because I'm just doing sports settings. So we'll go back to here and continue. Um, let's see here. Yeah, don't need any of that. Okay, anti-flicker. This is new. This is not in the A9. It's a big deal. Anti-flicker will, if you have this turned on, it will allow you in, especially high schools, where there's very few lights at night games, to um, it will kind of keep pace with the pulse of the lighting and it will give you the peak of the pulse. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sure you've had ex situations where you shot a motor drive sequence and one, one frame was blue, one frame was yellow, one frame was orange, one frame was green, and they're all varying exposures. Anti-flicker will kind of settle that down. The danger though, is if you have anti-flicker on, uh, it will sometimes retard uh, the shutter release so your lag time can be greatly increased by using this feature but it's a lot easier to use anti-flicker than it is to tone each and every frame 
from a series or from an entire game for that matter. So anti-flicker is a great help and I'm really glad to see that it finally made its way into E-mount because prior to this it was only existed in the A99 II on the A-mount side. So this is great to have it. Um, it is a feature that I would use but not on every assignment. And by the way, anti-flicker does not help you with the banding issues of electronic shutter, just so that you're aware of that. Okay, we're going to keep going. Um, even though we're not doing um, video in this, I always set to 4K, and I always set to 24P at 100 megabytes. That's, that's a really great place to be. Note that this camera does have the slow and quick settings that are found in the A9 as well as some of the RX series cameras. It is so much fun to play with this and it's addictive. Uh, really, really cool. Um, but I'm not gonna talk anymore about movies because we're headed for, we're still doing, this is primarily a uh, uh, video on sports settings for the A7 through, A7R three. So here's where you do your silent shutter shooting. So you have to go silent shooting on um, just realize that um, while it's great, um, there is no visual confirmation like there is in the A9. So it can be a little unnerving um, to use this, especially when there's no blackout, because it like doesn't really look like much is happening, but the camera's shooting at 10 frames a second. So you have to be very careful with this. I always turn these uh, off because it's just not a good idea to be able to shoot without a card. Um, steady shot on, I always leave it on. Okay, we're gonna keep going. Uh, finder frame rate. Uh, when, when this one came out of the box, it was actually set to standard and it's always good to get the extra quality for the viewfinder. Very important to have the best quality you can possibly get. Here's your live view display, which is fine. I think by now people know what that is. It's cool to note that the auto review feature is turned off in the default setting on the A7R3, which is great. It's the same in the A9. When it comes out of the box, it will not preview a picture right after you take it like a DSLR. Just a waste of battery life. And if you're on setting effect on, you already saw the picture. Why would you go back and look at it again? So it's kind of cool. Okay, custom key. This is really neat what they've done. Um, they have broken down the custom keys into still photography, video, and then playback, which is very clever. And it, it definitely is evidence that Sony's listening to those of us that are kind of always complaining about the menus. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is go all the way to the end. And the, the a AEL button is, I set it always to AIAF. Uh, I love that feature, it's great. I can shoot tennis with it all day long, even when people wear visors and even sunglasses, um, which is really cool. And the AF on button is already set to AF on. However, the shutter release button is also set to AF on. So it's very confusing when you first get one out of the box, you'll hit the back button and think, oh, this is great, it's working. But then the front one is also working and it'll get very confusing. So you have to disable the, the uh, shutter release autofocus on button, which we already did in a prior menu. Also, the focus hold is a really nice um, thing to change. I don't use it for that. I use it for IAF. And on the 8514 G Master and the, the uh, 7200 2.8 G Master, I really prefer um, using the, the, my thumb sometimes to create, you know, to activate autofocus for IAF. It's really cool. Uh, and I made a mistake because this one should not be on that. It should be on... AF on, excuse me. So AEL far right is IAF, AF on is AF on, and then focus hold is IAF again. That works really well for me. You might do something different and that's totally cool. I'm gonna skip through the movie ones because it doesn't matter. Um, the function menu set's really nice because you can make all these what you want. I'm not gonna do that in this video, but uh, it's great that you can do that, it's wonderful. Um, okay. This is very important, this one here. Lock operation parts. This is great because you can actually, like if you're shooting um, hockey on strobes and you don't want to come off 200th of a second, you can actually lock out the dial and wheel. So if you bump the camera by accident, it will not change. It's gonna be, it's gonna set that exposure and you're, it's gonna lock in there. 
I love this feature. It didn't exist on the prior cameras, and I'm really glad that they're putting these Pro features into the A7R Mark II. Audio signals I always have off because, like, if you can, if you have a choice of making noise and not making noise, it's almost always better not to make noise. Here we go. Um, send a smartphone. This is all kind of the way it, it it functions. This is very exciting. I haven't messed with this yet, but this is going to be great because at some point. We're going to be able to go right from camera to phone to FTP, which is really, really going to be awesome. Um, same thing. I'm not going to bother with these right now. And this is a big deal. This is not in the A9 yet, but I have this feeling that the custom three button in the upper left hand side of the back of the camera on the A9 is going to, going to eventually be able to do a rating. And this is really cool. You can do a single star, you can do two stars, you can do all these different options and then enter and now you're able to use that that key so if I if I hit this um, well it's not gonna let me do it because there's no lens but that's a really cool feature oh I hate this when it resets sorry about that I have to go find my way and sorry about that sometimes it just goes to this crazy place where I don't want it to go and uh, so you know this is a real world <laughs> movie. There we go. So um, we're going to keep going here. And yeah, we're going to keep going. Okay, this is a really good one here. Um, when you get the camera out of the box, delete confirm is going to be cancel first, which means you got to hit two buttons to cancel an image. I always change this to delete first because it just goes to one button. You hit the trash button and then the center enter and it's gone instead of having to hit three times. It's just, it's really better when you're editing in the camera at a game on the fly. This is great, great way to go. Okay, setting display quality is, is set to standard when you come out of the box, always go to high, definitely. It's great. Uh, let's see here, everything else looks good here. I don't use the touch. This is a big deal to a lot of people. I don't really care. Um, touch panel. It's great. I'm glad to have it for people that use it, but I don't. Um, let's see here. This is all more USB stuff. Okay, notice I've changed my set file name to A73, which is cool. I mean, you can actually make it whatever you want. You can make it your initials or whatever. It's very handy when you use multiple cameras and you're trying to figure out if you A, you have a problem with one of them, or B, you're trying to find a picture that you know you shot with a certain camera, like at a football game when you're using three cameras. It's very useful. Okay, this all looks good. Um, good, so we made it to the end. So ultimately, um, I have found that the, um, the A7R III is a very, very, very capable camera if you want one camera to do literally everything. The A9 still smokes the A7R 3 for autofocus, acquire speed, for uh, shutter release lag time, for all the things that really we care about as sports photographers. But, you know, they're $4,500, and the A7R 3 is only $3,200, and it's a great value for 10 frames a second. It's really, really cool. Um, I'm very impressed with it. I'm really glad Sony made the A7R 3 I think it's going to be a very successful camera. And uh, it may not be a huge draw for sports shooters, but it's going to be a massive draw for everybody else. Landscape, portrait people, wedding people. I think it's going to be very, very cool, especially with S-Log being included in it. I think it's going to have great appeal to videographers. And um, just across the board, I think if you want a Swiss Army knife, full frame mirrorless camera that does everything really, really well, you'd be hard pressed to find something better than the A7R 3 So thanks for watching and uh, look for more YouTube videos on the A7R 3 in the future. Thanks so much.